Hello everyone, welcome to History and Culture. Kangxi, an extremely famous emperor in Chinese history, has always been hailed as the emperor for all ages. He reigned for 61 years, skillfully governed the country, unified various ethnic groups, initiated the Kangxian Prosperous Era, and laid the foundation for the flourishing of the Qing dynasty. He is a giant figure in Chinese history. However, a book titled Thirteen Years in the Qing Court, written by the Italian missionary Matteo Ripa, revealed Kangxi's hidden and indulgent side beneath his glamorous exterior. The most important criteria for evaluating an emperor are his achievements and military accomplishments. From this perspective, Kangxi was undoubtedly an emperor of remarkable merit, with far-reaching influence on later generations. Ascending the throne at the age of six, Kangxi faced a challenging situation with internal turmoil and external threats due to his young age. Right from the beginning, Kangxi found himself in a difficult environment. Nevertheless, Kangxi's wit was evident from his youth. Even in chaotic circumstances, his meticulous management set the stage for the flourishing of his era. In 1667, following the death of the chief minister Sony, power fell into the hands of Obo. However, Kangxi realized his own weakness and lack of power to confront Oboi directly. Instead, he devised a plan involving eunuchs and guards practicing wrestling. Seizing the opportunity when Oboi was not paying attention, Kangxi captured him and regained power. Throughout history, there have been many examples of powerful ministers overshadowing emperors. But none achieved their goal as swiftly and with as little loss as Kangxi did. At this time, Kangxi was just a teenager, demonstrating his adaptability and remarkable political talent despite lacking political experience. In the 50-plus years of his direct rule, Kangxi excelled in domestic and foreign affairs, achieving significant accomplishments. He quelled the massive rebellion known as the Three Feudatories, reclaimed Taiwan, and ensured internal stability. He also signed the Treaty of Nurchinsk with Russia defining the northeastern border and curbing Russian expansion. However, Kangxi's greatest military contribution was his personal campaign against the Zunghar Khanate. Zunghar was a powerful nomadic empire in the northwest region, posing a significant threat to the Qing dynasty. Under Kangxi's leadership, this formidable empire disintegrated, and the Qing dynasty's territory expanded to Xinjiang and Tibet, doubling its size. Kangxi's frequent wars during his reign solidified Qing dynasty's rule, leading some to claim that he was not only a guardian of the throne but also a founding emperor who established the foundation. Kangxi also promoted Sinicization policies, emulating the Central Plains official system and advocating Confucianism. He not only selected numerous talented Han officials for decision-making but also required eight banners officials to understand Han's ceremonial practices. Through Kangxi's persistent efforts, ethnic barriers were significantly reduced, dispelling rumors of the impermanence of foreign dynasties. Kangxi's wisdom and military prowess allowed the Qing dynasty to firmly establish itself in the heartland, earning him the admiration of future rulers. He was considered an emperor who stood shoulder to shoulder with Tang Taizong and Ming Taizu, and his temple name was designated as Xingzu. Apart from his governance, Kangxi had various interests and hobbies. For instance, he had a particular affinity for mathematics and astronomy, which were disciplines introduced from the West, allowing Westerners to closely interact with Emperor Kangxi. There was once an Italian missionary who vividly portrayed the absurd side of this emperor for all ages, Kangxi. This Italian missionary was named Matteo Ripa, also known as Maguasian in Chinese. In the 49th year of Kangxi's reign, Matteo Ripa arrived in Macau for missionary work. As a missionary painter, he was recommended to Kangxi by the Pope's envoy in Macau, Pietro della Valle. Kangxi tasked Matteo Ripa with painting two portraits of himself, which he then sent to the governors of Guangdong and Guangxi. This allowed Kangxi to evaluate Matteo Ripa's artistic skills. In the 50th year of Kangxi's reign, Matteo Ripa formally became a painter in the imperial court. Diligently, he created numerous paintings throughout his tenure as the court artist. Due to his exquisite artistic skills, Matteo Ripa quickly gained Kangxi's appreciation and trust, 
receiving unprecedented privileges that European artists had never experienced before. Because of this special treatment, Matteo Rippa was able to witness Kangxi's true character outside the palace. His work, 13 years in the Qin court, documented what he saw and heard from Kangxi's 50th to the 13th year of Yongjing's reign. In this book, Matteo Rippa provided clear descriptions of life within the palace and recorded some of Kangxi's words and actions. After Kangxi's passing and Yongjing's ascension, Matteo Rippa returned to Italy. Upon his return, he compiled his 13 years of experiences and thoughts in China into a book titled 13 Years in the Qin Court, Memoirs of Matteo Rippa in China, commonly known as 13 Years in the Qin Court. This book holds a high status in Western literature and was once hailed as the foundation of Western Sinology. Many Western scholars used it as a reference to learn and understand Chinese culture. Within this book, there are numerous negative descriptions of Kangxi, especially regarding his interactions with his consorts. These portrayals have stirred controversy around Kangxi's revered image as the Emperor for all ages. For instance, in Chapter 21, there is a description of Kangxi summoning some consorts to stand on a blanket together. He then ordered guards to bring snakes, toads, and other disgusting creatures onto the blanket. Watching these creatures move towards the consorts, who were terrified and shocked, gave him pleasure. At times, the emperor even dispatched consorts to nearby mountains to collect roots and fruits of plants. Those who failed to complete the task would face punishment. Since Qing dynasty women had the practice of foot-binding, they were physically ill-suited for such labor and often ended up bruised and battered. Seeing the consorts in such distress, Kangxi not only did not sympathize but instead reveled in the excitement of their reactions. In 13 Years in the Qing Court, Kangxi's leisure time is depicted as such. Particularly during summer nights, there were only consorts, eunuchs, and guards present. According to Matteo Rippa, this was a most mundane existence, although it was considered the greatest joy by society. From this account, it is evident that this portrayal differs significantly from the Kangxi we are familiar with. He not only lost his intellect but also his majestic and patriotic image, appearing more like a libertine. A closer examination of 13 years in the Qin court reveals that the book is not intentionally maligning Kangxi. First, the book's descriptions show that Matteo Rippa was favored by Kangxi. As a foreigner, being consistently by Kangxi's side and accompanying him on outings was a rare privilege. Matteo Rippa himself acknowledged that this was a special treatment. Hence, it can be inferred that there were no personal grievances between Matteo Rippa and Kangxi. On the contrary, Matteo Rippa received special attention and appreciation from Kangxi, which he was grateful for. Secondly, as a trusted confidant of Kangxi, Matteo Rippa had many opportunities to interact with Kangxi. Everything recorded in 13 years in the Qin court is logical. The reason official history does not document these events is due to the traditional Chinese concept of not tarnishing the reputation of the revered. Such unsavory matters are generally left unrecorded. Furthermore, Kangxi's indulgence was mostly in private settings and official historians were outsiders who rarely witnessed such situations. In that era, male dominance and female submissiveness were prevalent in China. Kangxi's behavior, while difficult for the Western perspective to accept, was not uncommon in ancient China. Matteo Ripa's account, therefore, doesn't negate Kangxi's achievements. Instead, it adds depth and complexity to his character. Throughout his life, Kangxi defended national unity and is truly a hero of the Chinese nation. Under his rule, the Qing dynasty prospered, ushering in the Kangxian prosperous era that lasted for a hundred years. Although he had some moral flaws in his personal life, there's no denying that Kangxi is a highly acclaimed great ruler both at home and abroad, worthy of the title Emperor for all ages. As for whether Kangxi is liked by later generations, opinions will differ as everyone's judgment criteria are different. This is History and Culture Channel. Like and subscribe are the biggest help and support for us. Thank you everyone. See you next time.